Okay, so for those of you out there that are just starting to learn probability, this is a nice basic problem that's really going to highlight some very, very important concepts in probability. But uh, before we get going, let me read you the problem. It says, if you flip a fair coin, and what does a fair coin mean? It means it's not a trick coin. It's like perfectly balanced. So uh, basically like a nice perfect uh, coin that has heads and tails on it. That's what a fair coin is. So if you flip a fair coin 30 times, how many times would it come up tails? So we're talking about a coin that has uh, heads and tails. I'm pretty sure most of you know what I'm talking about. So what is the answer? Going to put that into the comments section. Of course, I'm going to tell you the correct answer here in just one second. And uh, obviously, I'm going to be talking about some very, very important big picture concepts about probability that uh, I think everyone should kind of know because probability statistics, it is everywhere. It's not only in your math courses that you might be studying, but it's, you know, we talk about the chances of something happening, the probability of something happening. We really want to have a sense of some basic probability concepts. I think it's just good general information for anyone. And of course, I'm going to get to all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. It is my true calling. And I can tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Maybe your confidence in uh, your ability to learn math is very low. I'm telling you right now, you can do much, much better. As long as you're willing to work hard, you have someone encouraging you to do well, all right, to like, hey, keep going. You, we all need uh, those people in our lives that encourage us, uh, you know, so that's important. You know, it could be your teacher, it could be a parent, it could be a friend, but hopefully you have some positive people uplifting you in your life. But the most important thing you need to learn mathematics is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're preparing for, something like, let's say, the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, GRE, GMAT, GED, a teacher certification exam, something that's going to have a major math section on it. Or if you are homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well. Because unfortunately, uh, a lot of students don't take adequate math notes. Some students don't take any math notes. When I was taking notes way back in the good old days, back in the 1980s when I was in high school, I would just like write a bunch of stuff in my notes. I'm like, hey, look at me, I'm taking notes. And then I would look at my notes and I'd have no idea what I wrote. So if you're going to take notes, make sure they're effective notes, right? Very, very important. The better your notes are, the better off you're going to be in mathematics. But in the meantime, you can use my, use my math notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. We're going to flip this fair coin 30 times. How many times would it come up tails? Well, the answer is, I don't know. Okay, the number of times it comes up tails is, well, that, could, that all depends, right? Uh, there is no answer. There is no precise answer. And just think about it. Uh, you know, you know, some of you might be saying, hey, this is a trick question. Well, no, li listen, if we had our little coin here, all right, and we flipped this thing 30 times, you know, kind of flipped it around and kind of spun up in the air and whatnot, it landed on the ground. You know, let's say you did this experiment uh, uh, five times, right? And, uh, you know, now most of you might be, oh, let's do it six times. All right, there's one, two, three. I'm kind of drawing my little coins here. Now, uh, let's just kind of use some common sense, right? So here's heads and here's tails. The, now, how many times can, or what's the chances of the odds of this thing coming up tails? Well, most of us just say, hey, don't you have a one out of two chance of coming up tails? Yes, that's absolutely right. But let's suppose you just flipped this coin uh, six times, right? Let's think of some possible outcomes. Uh, maybe it would come up tails, all right? 
maybe, you know, it's not going to come up like, say, oh, tails, and then it comes up heads again. Oh, it comes up tails, and it comes up heads, and it comes up tails, like it's alternating just because it has a one out of two chance. All sorts of crazy stuff can happen, right? You could flip this uh, coin uh, six times. It could come up tails, 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 and then maybe heads, right? It just You just don't know. We can't predict this. So, you know, there is no definitive absolute way we can predict the future. If you do know an absolute way to predict the future, definitely let me know because, you know, uh, that would be pretty uh, a pretty valuable skill, right? So we're talking about probability. What's the chances of something happening? Well, that's different. Okay, we can get a sense of uh, the chance of something that might occur. Now, if you said the number of times you can come up tail is 15 times, well, that is a reasonable guess, right? 15 out of 30 times it would come up tail. But that's a reasonable guess, but there's absolutely no way that we can guarantee that we know exactly that, in fact, that is going to be the case. But let's talk about some really big picture, basic concepts and probability that is really going to kind of tie in all these concepts I'm talking about. All right, so... First of all, we want to define um, the basic uh, definition of a probability of an event. Okay, so here is our fair coin. Here's heads, here's tails. So the probability of um, this coin coming up tails, right? This is the uh, what we call the theoretical probability. Well, that's going to be equal to the number of times this event can occur over the total possible outcomes of events. Well, what does that mean? Well, how many ways can this coin come up tails, right? There's only one way this uh, coin can come up tails, and that is if it lands and we see the tails, right? So there's one uh, way this coin can come up tails, but what's the total possible outcomes? Well, it could come up uh, two different ways, heads or tails. That's a total possible way. So it can come out one out of, we have one out of two um, possibilities uh, of this thing coming up tails. So we have one over two. And in probability, we like to express the probability in terms of percent. So one half is the same thing as 0.5 or 50%. We have a 50% expected um, uh, probability that this fair coin will come up tails. Now that's what we expect from a theoretical standpoint. Okay. But again, is there any guarantees? Well, no. Okay. So let's kind of take a look at this theoretical probability. So here is 30 trials. Let's get our coin out and let's flip this thing. So this is not the way the real world uh, works, right? Like, okay, you know, um, you have 50% of the time that this coin is going to come up tails. So I flip this thing 30 times. Uh, here we have 15 uh, results that are heads, and then here are 15 times the results were tails. Is this the way real life works? No, it does not work this way. So some of you might be saying to yourself, well, what's the whole point of learning this probability stuff? Well, we're going to get to that right now. Okay, so here's the deal. When we talk about probability, there's basically two types. Okay, there's two types of kind of real uh, probability um, that's kind of going on here, right? There are two big picture concepts about probability. The first is theoretical probability. And that's what we're doing um, with this definition of probability. We're just trying to get like, what is the, a theoretical expected outcome of this event occurring? So again, the probability of this ferret coin being a tail, uh, we have a one out of two uh, 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 two outcomes, right? So that's 50%. That's theoretical. We would expect 15%, but we have this other probability and that's called experimental. Let's suppose we're like, well, what's the, let's, let's go and put this to the test. So here, what we could do is run an experiment. Okay. So let's suppose we run this uh, experiment and we're going to flip this coin uh, uh, 30 times. We do 30 flips. We're like, da 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 da. And let's, uh, let's go and take this 50% um, uh, probability expectation and let's put it to the test. Well, we do 30 flips and guess what ha uh, ends up happening? We get 19 of um, those flips come out to be tails. So let's go and cal uh, calculate the actual uh, percentage, the chances of this coin flip coming out to be tails, we're going to put, that's going to be 19 out of 30 times. So 63.3%. 
Okay, so hmm, interesting. So we have a fair coin. Are we saying that every time you flip a fair coin, you have a 63.3% of it becoming, you know, landing on tails? Well, that doesn't make sense, right? Because we would expect that we um, only really have a one half chance, right? 50% uh, chance of it becoming uh, tails. So what's the deal here? We run this experiment, and it's like, wow, it looks like we get tails. Uh, more frequently than, you know, heads, okay? This, you know, how can we resolve that with our expected probability of 50% uh, of the times we get tails, right? So we have, like, something we have to resolve here. Well, what we need to resolve is the following, okay? You need to have an understanding of this thing right here, and this is called the law of large numbers, all right? If you've never heard of this, this is very, very important, extremely important. And I'm gonna go ahead and read this to you, and then basically, this is going to uh, kind of wrap up this video. Let's go ahead and read this here. So it says, the probability, and that, by the way, there's a lot of different ways you can express the law of large numbers. If you're in a more advanced probability class, it's a little more technical way you can express this, but I'm gonna use this language here. Probability is accurate over the long run, okay? The larger number of trials not just for a few events, okay? What we're talking about here is this. Um, if you just, you know, run a few experiments, like if we flip our coin a couple few times, uh, six times, and like, you know, five out of six times it comes up tails, that's not really good in, in terms of its accuracy. Or, uh, so here's the deal. The more trials we run in an experiment, the results tend to get closer to theoretical probability. This is the key concept you need to know, the law of large numbers. So let's go back to this little um, deal right here, this experiment, okay? So we had this theoretical probability that, hey, 50% of the time we are going to get um, tails. Well, we do an experiment for 30 flips and we only got tails 63.3% uh, of the, or we got tails 63.3% uh, uh, of the time. Well, guess what? If we in, uh, increase more trials or we add more trials to our experiment, so instead of 30 flips, let's go ahead and do 300 flips as an experiment. How about 3,000? Okay. How about, you know, we do, you know, uh, 3 billion? It doesn't make a difference. The larger this number goes up, okay, the more trials we run, guess what's going to happen to our results? This result here. It's going to get closer and closer to 50%. So if you take a fair coin and you flip it three trillion times, you can pretty much rest assured that almost uh, precisely 50% of the time you will get tails and 50% uh, of the time you're going to get heads. It's going to be like a almost 50-50% match, right? So that is... Uh, uh, an illustration of the law of large numbers. So just because you have a theoretical calculation in terms of, oh, what the probability should be, uh, you know what, doesn't really hold water in real life unless you're looking at situations where there's a large number of trials. And of course, that is resolved uh, in terms of uh, our understanding of the law of large numbers. So this is really kind of a big picture essence of probability and why you study it because probability is what we're trying to predict outcomes right it's a predictive thing say hey what's the chances of something what's the chances of you know um you know what the weather you know uh, it raining tomorrow what's the chances of whatever the case is right you, we hear this all the time in our news we're talking about hey the chances of win the lottery the chances of it raining uh what's the probability or what's the chances of this person winning the election whatever the case is the better you have a uh, better understanding of basic probability concepts like the law of large numbers the better off you're going to be. All right, so if you need help with some basic statistical concepts like this, I teach this stuff in um, uh, like part of my algebra courses at various levels. So, you know, you can check out like my pre-algebra course and my algebra course. I do have a chapter on data and uh, data, basic statistics and data and stuff like that. So I kind of get into not only uh, probability, I also get into like the measures of central tendency, like mean, medium mode, all that kind of good stuff. And I also do have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. But it's definitely good for all of you out there, even if you're not studying mathematics, to have a pretty decent 
foundation in terms of basic statistics and probability so you don't get fooled by some, uh, you know, someone out there twisting the numbers. Uh, I can't remember how the quote goes. It's uh, uh, There's basically, there's, um, oh, geez, I'm going to mess it up. But basically, there's uh, the truth and then there's lies and then there's uh, statistics. I <laughs> have something along those lines. But basically, what the quote is effectively saying is something uh, like, hey, listen, anyone can paint a picture using statistics and numbers, right, to paint whatever, to support whatever conclusions they think. So you got to be very careful in terms of, you know, anyone throwing numbers at you. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.